Welcome everyone to the first episode of The Spider's Catch. Whether you're here looking at the job board as a new adventuring party, or just your local NPC looking for a hot meal. Wait, people don't refer to themselves as NPCs, do they? A lot of this spawned from the new release of The Hero's Feast, the official D&D cookbook, written by Kyle Newman, John Peterson, and Michael Whitware. I was excited to see this combination of my two passions, and I think this is a great way to do a quick dive and see what we can make as an easy introduction to D&D and cooking. So let's see what we have here. We have human food. No, that's like dwarven food sounds better. Let's look at that. Smoked sausages and sauerkraut, corned beef and cabbage. I see what you're doing there. Dwarven flatbread. Let's do that. That sounds pretty easy. Let's see what we have for an ingredient list here. Flour, baking powder, baking soda, salt, whole milk or Greek yogurt, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. The book says Italian seasonings, but I think with the Greek yogurt, dill's going to do better. Don't ask me why I have so much dillweed. Let's just say I got a lot of hungry goblins to feed. Actually, that probably just brings up more questions. Anyways, get a bowl. Smaller bowl. Better. One and a half cups of flour, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, one half teaspoon of baking soda, as well as two and a half teaspoons of dill weed. Uh, you can use Italian seasonings with this. I'm going to add a little black pepper just for a little more kick. You can use red pepper flakes. Really, this is up to you. It's your flavor. I'm going to add a little more black pepper. Why not? Uh, one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. I'm adding a little extra. Just also, if kosher salt is good enough for Alton Brown, it's good enough for me. We're going to be adding three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Is it just me or are we making pancakes? I feel like if we added eggs to this, we'd just be making pancakes. No one else? Just me? All right. Well, adding two thirds of a cup of Greek yogurt, swapping this out for whole milk will make it a little smoother and a little less tangy. If the dough ends up being a little too dry, you can always add a little bit of milk in later. Dig right in and start mixing everything up. Just really get in there and mush it together. Wish I had that bigger bowl now. Yep, everything's fine. Exactly as planned. There we go. Now it's coming together. Okay. No, this is good. This is good. All right. Let's pick some of this stuff up. Just get your. Wait a minute. I see you there. All right. Back on track. Let's go ahead and just start picking up some of these little bits. Really, you want the dough to be soft and malleable, but not too dry. So if it starts flaking apart, you might want to add a little more moisture. It should come together and, you know, be a nice cohesive thing. Let's do a little cleanup here. Wipe down the tables. Da -da, gotta be clean. Put everything back. Yep, there we go. Bust out a little extra flour. Give the nice place where you can roll this out of dusting. And let's get this going. We're going to chop this into eight individually sized pieces. You can make these bigger or smaller depending on how large you want your flatbread to be. But uh, just the fact that they're uniform is usually all you're really going for. All right, let those rest for about 15 minutes. While we're waiting, we can go ahead and start our stove top up to about a medium heat. All right, let's get a bigger pan. There we are. And a little bit of oil. You can use the olive oil or you can use a neutral oil like canola or vegetable. Just lay that on there. Uh, if it's not hot enough, you won't hear the sizzle and it won't begin to puff. You're going to let this go for about four minutes. Waiting for it to start puffing and getting golden brown on the bottom. Give that a quick flip and nip. That looks great. We don't want it to be uniformly brown across. We just want it on the edges there. Let's go ahead and pull that out. Add a little bit of fresh oil before every time. Wait for it to get ripply and spread it around the pan. Go and get to frying. Your cook time here is really going to be determined by the size of your pan, the type of oil you're using, the temperature of your stovetop, the moisture content in your bread. So the best bet here is to just stay and watch it, and as soon as it starts getting a little crispy around the edges, to go ahead and flip it. Uh, if it is getting uniformly burnt across the bottom, your pan might be too hot. Uh, you can watch your oil if it starts getting too dark, maybe turn the, the stovetop down again. Make sure you're adding a little bit, but it should just fry up on the bubbles and the, the bread should be nice and puffy. The more I look at these, the more they are like pancakes, but they are going to be quite a bit more savory. So I might fry up an egg and some sausage and just... Oh, sh hold on. Hold on. Yep, there we go. Nope, saved it. We're fine. Save this for later. Get this cleaned off. Okay, wipe that down real quick. Be careful. It's hot. And at the sausage. That's it. I'm just going to cook a sausage. It's pretty easy. And add a little taste here to get steam going. Yeah, that's good. All right. Moving on. Egg time. Heat the pan. Add the butter. Crack the egg. Make the egg. Wait. Wait. Add some seasoning. Turn, turn, turn. Flip the egg. And that's kind of the whole deal. I don't know how dwarven inspired this was, but they are really good flatbreads. Fairly simple recipe, and it's really easy to scale up the dough if you need to make more than eight. If you have your own D&D inspired recipe, or you have something from a book that you'd like to see us try to create, let me know. Drop it down in the comments below. Uh, feel free to tell us about any time you've tried being a cook or a chef, or if you have a profession for your D&D characters. I always love hearing stories about that as well. As always, remember to keep your dice on the table. And if that knoll tries to offer you some food he just cooked, make sure you know where the meat comes from. Goblin kebabs. That could probably be its own video. I might think about that one. I don't know where I'd get fresh goblin, though. I'm kind of out of season. 